So where are they hanging on this bank? Well, Blair, what we're in here for is that this is all grass bottom, and then there's a big sand hole that meets the beach. And what we're doing is we're going to be fishing the snook, and they kind of cruise back and forth on yeah, this you edge. See the, see the grass line. All you the see the grass line. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to get in here, and we're going to work around. We're going to hit this little area, and then there's a little point, and we're going to fish that little point over there, and we're going to see if we can get one or two of them to eat. So are you going to chum so they'll come? Oh, yeah. It's the only way it happens. <laughs> it's Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. If you ain't got white bait, don't stay at home. I'm going to put the talon down. I'll tell everybody who we're with here. Well, welcome to this episode of Addicted Fishing. We're with Captain Chad Manning, fishing his home waters of Tampa Bay, kind of Apollo Beach is where he grew up, which is on the other side of the bay. And uh, I think he knows about every pothole around here. So y'all stay tuned. We're going to get baited up and uh, see what we can catch with Captain Chad. Let's do it. Let's get a fish on, brother. I'm going to get that bigger rod. Bigger rod? Bigger rod. You said there's some grown ones here, right? Yes, sir. Big rod, big bait, big fish. Come on. Come on, fish. This is the ultimate chumming. And you don't have to be a baseball player. No, sir. <laughs> So what do you call your scaled sardines? You call them white bait, pilchards? White, white bait, pilchards, scaled sardine, crickets, You know, on the, other side of the, on the other side of the bait, they call them shiners. Shiners. How's that? That was instant. <laughs> and the targeted species, yes, huh? Sir. Uh, I think he popped off. No, he didn't. Uh, come on, little dude. We haven't shown one of these off in, well, almost since about 2010. That's when they got really wet hard. This would be a good one to show off. Under the skeeter. You should be hooked good. Well, he likes the bottom of the skeeter. One more time around, brother, and I think we got this one. Yes, sir. That's a good feeling seeing them since 2010, huh? Oh, yes, sir. This He's got a little damage on him, too, don't he? Looks like a porpoise hitting. Beautiful got little fish there. Oh, yeah. See here where you said it looks like a porpoise or something. Hit him on the side if you can check his gill out right there. Point that out to him there. Right in here. Yep, that is the spot. Well, sir, let's let this dude back in the water. And off he goes. Yes, sir. Shall we rig for another one? I think we should. I think it's just getting good. Sounds good. We all stay tuned. We're going to be right back with some more Dick the Fishing. Captain Chad Manning. Right along, uh, I guess this is what, 275? 275. On a beautiful spring day, first day of spring. We'll be right back. So since we're in one of many spots here, basically the same thing, just potholes. And... Basically what we're concentrating in is it's early spring. Our fish are staging. Yeah. They're not quite ready to go to the passes and breed. So they're coming out of the residential canals. They're coming out of the marinas, anywhere where there's a lot of warm water, seawalls and everything. And they, they don't want to go too far away from warmth. So a lot of times when the sun comes up, it beams up against seawalls and the sand and it heats the water up. So the water here is about three, anywhere from three to six degrees higher than it is two miles away from anything that's just open water on the flat. So that's kind of what we're concentrating for. And another two, three weeks when our water temperature comes up, the fish will migrate into to potholes that are a little bit further away from the shorelines. There we go. Little snooky. Almost like a little trout. 
Well, welcome back, folks. We've moved positions about three or four times today. Of course, the weatherman has got it wrong again, and we uh, have been dodging the wind, trying to come up to these spots that are getting warm. It's the first day of spring today, and uh, our target species right now is snook, which is exactly what I got here. Come here, dude. Come on. Able to use 40 pound test because the water has just got a little bit of a little bit of cloudiness to it. I'll show you what this snook did. Oh, he ate that one. I'm gonna let him keep it. But you'll be able to see basically where that snook, I'll show you here in a second, but isn't that a pretty fish? We got an audience right here next to 275. That's a pretty one. I'm gonna let this guy back in the water. Go. Come on. That water's pretty warm. Get on out of here. Yeah, the water temperatures come up about four degrees, and that's duly from uh, the sun coming up and the clear skies. And uh, we've had some good strong. We're on a full moon, so we've got some big tides moving in and out. And so we're just able to get lucky and get the water warmed up a little bit more than what it was this morning. Early spring fishing. Early spring fishing. First day of spring. I'm going to put this against my blue shirt here so you can see basically where that snook chafed that leader up real good. That's why I went to 40 pound test. Just because if I was using 25, if the water was really, really clear, I would be using a lot lighter uh, fluorocarbon leader. Uh, and using the Seaguar 40 in here, you saw what that did, even with all that chafe. And I had to let that snook keep it. That hook will come out hopefully in a couple days and uh, it'd be good as new. But I'm gonna re-rig. So Blair, what I decided to do is we come over here, kind of get out of the wind. The yeah. wind conditions completely pulled a 180 on us. So basically, we're going to be fishing this pothole that's deep against this mangrove island, and we're going to try to catch some snook, possibly some redfish, and hopefully some trout, all in one spot. Maybe get a the Tampa, ba Tampa Bay slam. Yes, sir. Let's do it. God, that wind just changed, didn't it? Well, Blair, now that we've kind of moved up, I think it's time I make it rain some more bait. What do you think? If you chum, they will come. Yes, sir. Ooh. There you go. Watch me eat it. That looks like a snooky. It definitely is. I guess that's the one that was over there eating. Is it a snook or red? It's a snook. Oh, he chased your bait all the way to the boat. You gonna double up, big dog? I'm trying. Come on, Daddy-o. Oh, it's a mackerel or something. No, it's a little trout. No, it is another red fish. Oh. <laughs> Told you it was a red fish. Who are you talking to here? Dude, are you seeing this trout trying to come up and eat the bait for my red fish? Yeah, it got me all excited. Well, I guess I'll land your red fish for you soon. You know, it's not every day. I get Blair Wiggins to land my fish. What were you saying? That's not a keeper redfish? That's Look, definitely a slot redfish. Looks like a keeper red to me. Get my finger in there, right? There we go. Got the old laser sharp number ones on him, do you? Yes, sir. Beautiful little redfish. I caught one about that size offshore the other day off Canaveral. We were at about 70 foot of water. Come up, he was about that size. Oh, wow. It was weird looking, had a bunch of mites and stuff all over him. But that's a pretty one. But they sure are pretty, brother. Yes, Good sir. I'm on that one. Hey, y'all stay tuned. We're going to be right back with Chad Manning, Tampa Bay, and uh, who knows what else. Probably another snook. We're going to be hitting this spot. But hey, after the break, you're going to see something. We went out in December and uh, we did a little grouper digging, had, you know, kind of the same weather predictions that got bad on us, but we did catch a couple nice fish. So after the break, you see some grouper and maybe some more snook. We'll be right back. But Chad's got down on stinkies, right? Those scaled sardines? Yes, sir. Picked them up at O'Neill's this morning. They stink pretty bad. And uh, that's usually around anywhere you're fishing, dropping down, you call them stinkies. Everybody knows it's sardines out of a bag. 
but uh, I have on what they call a scaled sardine, otherwise known as white bait, pilchards, you know, you name it. It's, how many different names you got for them? I call them, when they're that big, I call them polydines or razor bellies. <laughs> what are we gonna get today? Well, I believe we're gonna catch some red groupers, some scamps, some gag groupers. Um, the water temperature is that magical 72 degrees out in the Gulf of Mexico. We hit our fall season. I'm pretty confident we'll be able to hook a few kingfish. I'm sure it felt like it smacked it. God, it don't take long for him to start clumping on that, does he? No. Well, I told you I felt the mangrove snapper down there. <laughs> Our grouper trips turn into a mangrove trip. You know what? That's not a bad thing, though. That's not. They're great eating. This is on a pinner, so this could be a gag. Come on, Mr. Gag. Nope. Another red. See, if y'all want to come catch a bunch of fish that look like that, you definitely can come and get your fill. What I like to do is hook them through the head like that, and rip the tail, get the stink going. And just give them a little flip. And just knocker rigs, huh? You don't do the big traditional grouper rig? No, I, I, I like knocker rigs. It's simple, it's easy. It's, uh, you can catch everything on it. That's what I use for flounder over on the East Coast is those knocker rigs. I, I first started using knocker rigs mutton snapper fishing. And then uh, it just seems to work too well not to keep using it. If it's working, why change it, right? Exactly. And Mr. Mango Snapper right here. Oh yeah, there you go. Still on the right side of the rig then, huh? And he came off a dead bait. He's almost looking like he wants to bite me. There he is. Get him. Ah, I rocked him. No. Come on out. I was on a pinner? Yeah. Thump it, thump, boom, 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 start playing that. There you go. There he is. That's the trick right there, <laughs> every time. <laughs> hey, it works. It does. That's usually a gag doing that, huh? Yes, sir. Ooh, yes, it are, baby. And that? I don't guess you got to measure these, do you? Ooh. <clears throat> he thought he had me. What you did is he played the blues. He rocked you up. You see where he, he stuck his head down in the rocks down there. And what they do, they'll get down in there and they'll flare their gills like that out and they get locked in there. So what I did, I don't know if you heard Chad, he said, thump the line. I went tight on it, started thumping it. And sure enough, I felt him start to come out. Then I just put the boots to him and there's what you got. A couple of fillets. Twenty inches on these, huh? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. He's twenty. I think he makes it very easy. 
That's why I see he got his head down in them rocks. And he's got this thing buried. The, the key is you were patient and you stuck with him, you know? Yeah. So there we go, folks. Gag grouper. About 58 feet of water now. We moved a little bit to find them, and we finally did. Y'all stay tuned. We're going to be right back with Captain Chad Manning. Right off of Tampa Bay, brother. What a beautiful little spot he's got here. We'll be right back. Tampa Bay is probably one of my favorite places to fish. It's centrally located. Anywhere along the west coast in the Gulf is a great place to fish, inshore or offshore. Early spring, like we're fishing right now, the best way to get a bite and the best way to film a fishing show, especially when the water's cold or after a cold front, is using live bait. Nervous bait. I can't get my bait to stay where, where it needs to be over here. If any of y'all ever fish Tampa Bay, you'll see the guys in the morning at the Skyway. It's not a secret that's well kept or anything. That's where everybody goes and catches their bait. As long as you got a great well system like what you got in this Skeeter right here, it pumps in a ton of water and keeps two wells slam full, blacked out full of bait. When the fish aren't super aggressive and they're just kind of chasing the baits but not taking them and the baits are out swimming, just give them a little trim job. The water was a little bit dirty, so we were slinging 40 pound Seaguar fluorocarbon pretty much all day long. We didn't get any of that real clear water, so we didn't have to really downsize that fluorocarbon at all. I'm gonna put this against my blue shirt here so you can see where that snook chafed that leader up real good. That's why I went to 40 pound test. So if you ever do make it over to Tampa, there's a ton of fishing guides here. If you ever get a chance or have the opportunity to book Chad, highly recommend it one of the best guides I've ever fished with. He slings a lot of chum, but you'll catch a lot of fish with him. Remember one thing though, every fishing season starts right here at Dick's. Rig It Right by Wright and Miguel. So Blair, when we left the dock this morning, we had uh, east winds about uh, two to five miles per hour. And of course, the weatherman was wrong and it switched out of the northwest and we have about a 15 to 20 mile per hour wind. There he is. Oh, come on, be a snook. Nope. I think it's a good redfish though. Yes, sir. <laughs> it makes it fun on this light rod. I switched up to the small one. Just have a little more maneuverability. You said those giant snook were in their spots earlier, so I think we were throwing those eight footers with 20 pound. This, that's my seven six. If there was just a tournament going on today and we were in it. <laughs> Well, sir, looks like all these snook are turning into redfish, brother. It's hard to complain about catching redfish. <laughs> Definitely hard to complain. Especially when they're all this size here. Come on, dude. Nice, flat, fat, plump redfish. Ooh, ooh, come here, dude. Look at that guy. Circle hook was right perfect in the corner. Man, that's just a, a beautiful specimen of a redfish. Get on out of here. Well, Mr. Manning. Yes, sir. I think, uh, I think we've about run out of time in this 22 minute, 30 second segment. And we have definitely caught a lot of redfish. If y'all ever want to come to Tampa Bay, if y'all ever do come to Tampa Bay, want to catch a lot of fish, it don't matter if the wind is five like it was this morning or 15 like it is now. This guy can put you on a lot of fish. I would highly suggest you give him a call. Don't forget about the website at DickToFishing.com. Make sure you send us a pound hashtag. Show us your Mogan or show your Mogan. We'll see you next week. Oh. Check out more footage from this show by logging on to AddictiveFishing.com for outtakes and bloopers. There he is. Oh!
Whoops. Chumley Mandingo. 